おはようございます。Uh, today we're studying Genki Lesson 16 Kanji.、Uh, you can follow along by looking at page 295, 296 in your textbook. So the first kanji we have here、um, is Kodomo no Domo. And of course, it's red domo, that's the kunyomi. Another kunyomi is sona. And then you have kyo for the onyomi, the Chinese reading. This actually means companion. That's one of the meanings in offer. So, of course, we find this in kodomo.、Uh, sonairu means to offer something、uh, to the spirit, it says here, but generally speaking, it's an offering, something you offer to、uh, the gods, or if you lay something on a, a grave or something, that's sonairu.、Um, Teikyo also means offer. So, one of the strategies I came up with here is, of course, we have、uh, hidari gawa is nimben,、uh, person radical. And then this actually, this right hand side actually means together.、Uh, but I like to break that down a little bit further, where you have eight. So, when I say eight, I'm referring to this portion eight people.、Uh, here's your person、um, crawling under a fence. <laughs> so, Those are your best buds who would crawl under a fence for you. The stroke order for this one is pretty easy. Ichi, ni, and start here for san, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, and hachi. And actually, kind of cool that this is hachi, that's the last stroke, and this is also hachi. This kanji means world or generation. Uh, it's read se or se with a long vowel. That's obviously the onyomi, the Chinese reading. This is the kunyomi is yo.、Um, so, a couple words we find this in are, for example, the world is sekai. And this appeared in the last chapter in one of the readings. I believe it was、uh, my favorite place in the world is Okinawa or something to that effect.、Um, sewa, which means care. Seidai, generation. Sansei. Now, you've probably heard this before. For example, have you ever heard a Japanese person saying,、uh, nisei des,、uh, which means I'm a second generation Japanese person? In that case, it's just understood that they mean second generation Japanese versus something else.、Uh, the society, Yononaka.、Uh, this is like Hiragana Sei, but it has an extra couple of strokes. So, think of those three vertical lines here、uh, as generations being connected together. So, something like that. Of course, that's not the stroke order. So, this one is start with this horizontal line ichi, then vertical, ni, san, then connect them, shi, and then go. This kanji is the second half of sekai, which means world. So, of course,、uh, the onyomi is read kai. This means world.、Uh, so, sekai you have here. You have shikai, which means visibility. As you can see, that has that radical there.、Um, this also is sekai. So, a long vowel here, slightly different, means political world. And then you have genkai. Limit. Now, none of these, I think, are anything that are appearing in our text at the moment. So you don't need to know them. It's just trying to give you an example of some other uses of this.、Um, I like to think of this as a rice field on top of what looks like a kind of rudimentary house. And that's your whole world is that rice field with your house.、Um, stroke order, pretty easy here. Ichi ni, that's one stroke. Ichi ni san, shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, kyu. Now, notice this one has a bit of a curve here, so it's not hachi, kyu, but curve that out a bit. This is the kanji for all. It's read zen for the onyomi, matta with the chisai tsu, and sube for the kunyomi, the Japanese reading. Um, so, we find this in words like zenbu, which we, I believe we already know this one.、Um, also, anzen, which means safety.、Uh, this is an easy use of this one. So, zenkoku means the entire country. 
You may have heard this if you watch um, anime or read manga. Mataku. It's almost like a swear word in Japanese. It means kind of like, what the hell? And then we have subete. Uh, this one is like an umbrella. So you have an umbrella like this. And then underneath this kanji here means king. And we see this in, for example, Zenkoku. You see in the inside there, you have that same kanji. So a king within borders, and he owns a little piece of, I don't know what that was, jewelry or some sort of landmark. The stroke order for this, quite easy. Ichi, ni, san. Then we do the vertical stroke. Shi, go, and roku. Notice that these are all slightly different in length here. So you have one slightly longer on the top, slightly shorter, not that much shorter. So don't write it, for example, like this. Don't write it so short that it looks um, too short. And then this one is a lot longer here. So about like a little bit longer than that first stroke. Uh, this runs with bu or he, and it means part or section. Uh, and also, for example, this is uh, bu also means club in Japanese. It's kind of a suffix. Um, so you find this in zenbu. So we studied zen in the previous slide. You have heya. Uh, this is what I was talking about. Like when you say the tennis club, you say tenisubu, the tennis club. So you equate bu with club. It can also, like gakubu can mean a department within a university. Uh, bucho, bucho is a section or a department person who's been there the longest, so a department manager. Uh, this one's quite easy, I think. If you think of this as a pictograph, you have standing, tatsu, on a box, which in this case is kuchi, but it also looks like a box, holding a flag with a bee on it. So that's why you have this sort of flag-looking thing here. It looks like a bee, but it has a long stem. So standing, that's Ichi ni san shi go roku shichi hachi. Uh, do this part next. Kyu ju juichi. Hajimeru hajimaru. That's what this kanji is right here. It means to begin. We already know that word. Uh, the onyomi is shi, and it is the kunyomi that's hajime or haji, I guess. Um, so you have hajimaru hajimeru. This is uh, sort of what we talked about in class. We have an intransitive and a transitive pair. Transitive means to begin something. So this would take a direct object, meaning it takes an O. Whereas hajimaru, something begins, like kurasu ga hajimaru, versus sensei wa kurasu o hajimeru. Uh, in cases where it's read she, you see it in things like this, shihatsu, first train, uh, or kaishi, meaning to start something, or start, I guess it's a noun. Well, this one's pretty easy. We recognize the left radical as onna. Um, and then I might also like to think of this katakana mu as somebody kneeling. So in this case, she's kneeling on a stage or a box, uh, as with sort of the beginning of a performance, think of if you know of Dakugo, which is a traditional Japanese art where, you know, somebody sits on a pillow and tells humorous stories. So the stroke order is Ichi, Ni, San, Shi, Go, Roku, Shichi, Hachi. I also think that one looks like a nose, and that might help you sort of not rotate that too much. So if you think of a nose on a face like this, um, then it will help you not write it, for example, like that, which I see quite often. Uh, finally, we get to learn the kanji for week. We've known it since, I think, lesson four. <laughs> In any case, it is kind of a complicated kanji, but you know it's read shu, uh, my shu, Senshu, Ishukan, one week, right? Uh, Nishume means the second week. So you could say like Ningatsu Nishume, the second week in February, for example. And then, of course, we have Shumatsu. 
So this one is a bit tricky. I think of this um, left radical it as three. So because it does kind of have a three, it has an extra stroke there. We just kind of have to remember that. And of course, this long tail. So think of three Saturdays, because we see Saturday in here, where you are on a box. We're going to kind of stick with that whole thing about the stage or a box. And you're performing in a club right here. So three Saturdays, um, three weeks of Saturdays in a month or something like that. And I don't know if that really helps, but uh, something to start with anyway. And the stroke order for this is you start here first. So it's ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi. Kyu, ju, juichi. So those are separate strokes right there. I find this kanji to be deceptively simple. It means by means of or compared with. Um, not really a good translation, so we can look over here in a second. The reading is e. That's the only one they've introduced. Um, so you have igai, which means other than, or ijo, which means more than. Uh, ika, so notice that ijo, that jo right there, we know as above. So above something else. Ika is less than something else or less than. Uh, inai is within something. And you have izen, which means before or formally. This is really, um, as I said, deceptively simple. You have a variation of de. And then you have uh, kind of a so. If you think of that line as kind of connected here, right here we have the so. And then you have something kind of hooked on to that, so uh, to make, what, a person? So I'm not 100% sure. I don't really have a good strategy for this one. If anybody has one in class, let me know. Here's a stroke order. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. So this isn't quite like this, right? So you almost have a little bit of a, you know, a curve that direction there. Kangaeru. I think we just studied this. It means to think. Uh, it also, kangai itself means uh, an idea. The So the kunyomi is kanga, and the onyomi is ko. So, of course, you find this in kangaeru, to think. Kangai, which means idea. Kokogaku is archaeology literally almost to think about old things, the study of thinking about old things. Uh, and then you have sanko as another example, meaning reference. And so think of this this way. You have doyobi no do. seems like a lot of kanji in this chapter has do in it, doyobi no do. So think of doyobi no do. And then you have five here. This almost looks like a five, so think of it as kind of a squarish looking five. Um, and then a slash that comes through. So don't even think five thoughts on a Saturday because it's supposed to be a holiday, not a work day. Stroke order is ichi ni san. Notice how long this is compared to this one. So this isn't your traditional do where it's only slightly longer. It's actually quite long. Uh, and then you have the slash here, so no do yobi. And not even five thoughts. Hey. This is a really easy kanji. Uh, it means to open. And kai is the onyomi, the Chinese reading. A and hira are the kunyomi, the Japanese readings. So, of course, we have akeru, which means to open something. Uh, aku, so akeru is transitive. Aku is intransitive. So you could say doa ga. Aiteimasu, the door is open, but doa o akete kudasai, that takes, the transitive takes an O. Uh, hiraku is also a word for open. So I could say, um, kyokasho o hiraite kudasai, open your textbook. So that's one way of saying it. And then to open a store is the onyomi version, kai, and then this is not mise here, it's ten because they're both read in the onyomi version. 
Um, I really like the strategy for this one. This is pretty easy. Of course, this means gate. So it's supposed to be a pictograph of a gate plus a Shinto Tori, which are the uh, the gates of the Shinto shrine. So if you see that it's almost exactly that same shape there. Um, and I always think of the gates to the Shinto shrine are always open. Now contrast this with Shimeru, uh, where the inner part is, you, know, you have gate, of course, and then you have Katakana O. But I've always said that Katakana O looks like a pictograph of someone who's standing like this. These are the arms. And then they're blocking it with their foot. So the entrance is blocked, so it's closed. Uh, stroke order is ichi, sorry, ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku with a hook here. Don't forget your hook. Hook. Uh, where was I? Roku, nana, hachi, kyu, ju, juichi, juni. And again, that has a curve to it. It's not, for example, this. This is the kanji for shop or house. I know we already know mise, but this is another one. In fact, this is almost always used as a suffix for things. Um, the onyomi is oku, the kunyomi is ya. So we have things like heya. Remember where we have, um, this is also red boo, right? Uh, honya literally a book store. And you have sakanaya, you could have hanaya, nikuya, sushiya. This is the suffix for lots of different stores. Um, also then you have okujo, which means the top part of the house or the shop. And then okunai, which means indoors. I like to think of this one as a roof with an awning. So it's not just a roof. It actually has an awning right here. And maybe that's a sign, you know, where it says, you know, for example, sushi or something like that, where you have one person, here's your one, and they're kneeling. Remember how we think of kneeling, that mu as kneeling. Kneeling on the ground. So here instead of doyobi, I've used the the meaning of ground or dirt. So think of a shop or a stall where one person is kneeling on the ground. Now you could think of it as sort of like, you know, they're kneeling and it's Saturday, sort of like the Saturday market or something like that. Contrast this with another kanji we learn in this lesson where this is, um, this also means room, or I guess it means room, and it doesn't have an awning. So the stroke order is ichi, Ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, kyu. Probably the easiest kanji in this lesson is the one that means direction or person. The onyomi is ho, the kunyomi is kata or gata. And so persons on one's, person on one side, sorry, is mikata. That appears in the reading. Um, the way of doing is what this also means, like yomikata, the way of reading. So you can ask, for example, ah, kono kanji no yomikata wa nan desu ka? How do I read this kanji? And this can be used in lots of things, like how do I make this? Ano, tsukurigata wa nan desu ka? What is the tsukurigata? Um, also then you have yugata, you means evening. Uh, and then you have direction, I guess, if you don't think of that way. Ryoho, both. Hoho ho is method. I like to think of this one as a pictograph of a person walking. Uh, you know, they've got their arms out here. These are the arms. And their legs are kind of bent in a certain direction. So that indicates direction as well as kind of a pictograph of a person. And the structure is quite easy. It's ichi, ni, don't forget this is san here, and it's kind of curved a bit. At the bottom, it's definitely a hook. Ichi, ni, san, shi Now, this doesn't look really easy, but we already pretty much know this kanji. Um, we have, it means transport, or oddly enough, luck. Un is the Chinese reading. Hako is the Japanese reading. 
And we know this word already, undal. Or unten. And then to say someone is lucky is actually ungai. They have good luck. Unme is fate. And then another uh, sort of thing consistent with the idea of transport is hakobu. Now, hakobu has a sense of carrying something fairly heavy. So it's different than motsu. So we have on the left-hand side, we have um, the three again. So think of three cars, because we have the car radical in here, with a roof over the car. So cars with roofs, roofs. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. But anyway, um, the, which is transportation that you can drive. For the stroke order, we're going to start here. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi. And then we're going to do hachi, kyu, ju, juichi, juni. Okay, so I made a mistake. We didn't know the previous kanji very well, but we definitely know this one. Uh, it's a variation on something we've already learned. Um, the reading, the onyomi, the Chinese reading is do. The kunyomi is ugo. So we have things like undo and ugoku, to move. Jidousha, an automobile, literally a self-moving car, automobile. Dobutsu, uh, something, literally something that moves, is an animal. And then um, I introduced this one day in class. It's doshi, which means verb. This means sort of like fragment of speech. And like I explained, this is um, actually part of the verb uh, hataraku, right? So we had this whole thing. Hataraku, where now we just don't have that radical over there. So that radical there means omoi. And basically I deconstructed that to mean cars with double wheels. So you have car, right? You have car, uh, but you have double wheels. So you have the extra wheels on there. Um, and, of course, strength. So this katakana ka here means strength. So literally moving heavy things is what it ends up meaning here. So here's the stroke order. It's ichi ni. Sorry, that's a bit long. Ichi ni san shi go roku. And then we have shichi hachi q. This is slightly angled here, slightly angled. Uh, hachi q. I'm not sure what number I'm on now, but this is how you finish it up. Looks like a ka. Oshieru. It's a fairly easy, easy kanji. It means to teach. Kyo is the onyomi. Oshi is the kunyomi. And of course, we find it in oshieru. Kyoshitsu means classroom, literally room where something is taught. Uh, kyokai, where you get together and you're taught something. Uh, kiristo kyo means Christianity. Uh, and then you have kyokasho, which we've come across a couple times. So think of this as Saturday. So you have doyobi no do up here on the top. And then you have children on the bottom with a slash through it, okay? And then you think of a variation of father here. So not quite chi-chi, but more like this. So fathers uh, should be, should not teach their children things on Saturday. It's a day of rest or play. And the stroke order goes ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, Shichi, Hachi, Kyu, Ju, and Juichi. So you will mix this up with Ya. And remember that the inside is the same. Inside is the same, but the awning is not there on this one. 
So this is shitsu, and it means room. And you find it things like kyoshitsu, the previous slide introduced that kanji. You have kenkyu shitsu, kenkyu means research, and shitsu means uh, room. So research room is a professor's office. Uh, you also have uh, chikashitsu, which means basement. And then machiai shitsu, which means waiting room. So I like to think of this one as having a, a, a roof under which one person kneels on the ground. So one person kneels on the ground here. So I'm using doyobi as ground. Contrast this, obviously, where um, ya here has an awning and more of an enclosure on the side here. So you have this rather than this. And here's the stroke order. Ichi, ni, san, don't forget your hook there. Shi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, kyu.